Hello from Slidenerd and hello from Weaves. In this video, I am going to continue my discussion about what are methods in Java. In the last video, I talked about the three different types of methods. Here, let's go ahead build the syntax further. So what are the different types of methods? I have discussed about this in the last video. But just to give you guys an overview over here, first we have the dump method who does the same thing every time. For example, adding 5 and 7. Second, you have the clever method, who's like this assistant you have, you tell the assistant what needs to be done and he does it. For example, here, if you say void add int a int b, you're gonna give these values for a and b and the assistant is gonna add them up every time. That means you can give different values each time and the assistant is working on that. Then you have the smart method, who not only takes work from you, but also gives you back a result saying this and this was done. For example, here int add int a int b, you're gonna take the values from the guy who's gonna use your assistant, add them up and give a result back to the guy who called your assistant, right? Or you can say who called your method. For example, return c is gonna give a result back. I've discussed about these three things in my last video. If you guys haven't seen it, please go ahead and check it out. So what are the two steps in using a method? First, go ahead, define the method. Second, go ahead, use the method. Now this is just like hiring a new assistant. First, you have to train that person to tell what needs to be done and how it should be done. Second, you have to actually use that person for your work, right? And that is how methods also work. Alright, so step one, define the method. Here, you specify a name. Remember, the names follow Java naming conventions. For example, no numbers at the start, you can use underscore and blah blah blah. You can check those rules out if you are not sure about them. 2. Specify what your method does. And for that, first have these brackets open, then close these brackets and within these two brackets, write the code that you are gonna need for doing whatever you want, right? 3. Specify what data the method needs. For example, if, you're, if your method is a dumb method, you don't need any parameters, keep these brackets empty. If you're using a clever or smart method, you're gonna take some values from the person who calls you to do the work, right? If your assistant or method takes only one value, in that case, specify its data type, that is int, and specify a dummy variable, that is a, and close the bracket if only you have taken one value, right? If you have more than one value that is being taken from the boss, in that case, specify a data type for each value and then a dummy variable. For example, here I have taken, I have taken two values from the boss. I'm going to have an int a, which is a dummy variable number one, put a comma, take int b, which is the dummy variable number two. All right. So these are the two values that I'm going to take from the boss and then specify what type of data and what variable the method returns. Now remember, it is not necessary that every method returns a value. There are some methods like your dumb methods that don't return anything. Only your smart methods are the one that actually return something, right? For example, here I say return a plus b. Now suppose a is 6 and b is 7, so 6 plus 7 is 13. I'm trying to return the value 13 over here. So first question, what is the data type for the number 13? It's an integer by default, so here I put int at the top. Now that is how things work. You have to specify what type of data you return at the top and what data you're returning at the bottom. So both have to be done simultaneously. And then there's one more question which is a bit tricky at this point. Can everybody see the method? Now just like you having secrets, methods also may be used by everyone or some of them may be kept as secrets. For that, you have modifiers over here. Now what these modifiers are, how they work exactly is something I will keep talking about at a later stage in our videos. But for now, just remember, when you write public over here, this method is gonna be seen by everybody. Step 2, use the method. So let's go ahead and see step 1 once again. I have my int add which is actually a smart method. I'm taking two values int a, int b from the boss. Adding up those values by saying int c equals to a plus b. Giving a result back to the boss by saying return c. What is the data type of c? Integer. And that integer I have written over here at the top. Remember, I said write the data type at the top and write the data itself at the bottom. 
and then here inside my main function I'm gonna use this method now remember so far when you define the method you simply told your assistant what work he should do he or she should do but here in this part you're gonna actually use your assistant to do the work for example here I have my int x equals to 5 y equals to 6 I say add x comma y now what happens x is 5 y is 6 y is copied inside your integer a 6 which is y is copied inside your integer b and then you add them up you give the result back that value comes all the way back inside sum when you say return 5 plus uh, 6 that is 11 sum contains 11 that's how things work so i hope things are very clear to you don't worry in the next video i'm gonna go ahead net beans and show you guys a real working example of our calculator stuff which we were talking about in the first video one last thing that remains when should i make a method now this is often one of the most confusing things if you're a beginner ask yourself these questions is that a single operation you want to do now remember you make methods for doing only one operation but that one operation may contain several steps for example to find the simple interest you may have to do the following things get the value of p get the value of n get the value of r calculate p and r divide by 100 return the result back to the boss or the person who's calling it but all these steps form only one operation that is calculate simple interest so you make methods only for doing a single operation in most cases if you're doing it for doing multiple operations that is fine but remember that is bad code so in this video i have talked about the basics of methods and the syntax behind it in the next video i'm gonna go ahead in netbeans and show you guys how to make our calculator better using methods which is the first step towards object oriented programming so if you guys like what you saw please subscribe to my channel comment let me know your thoughts i would love to hear from you guys thanks for watching i'll catch you guys in the next bit have a nice day